at four years old, like a lot of people with Mickey Mouse and uh, the Mouseketeers, and that was my first drum. But my dad was a drummer, and that's what really got me interested. And in the band that we were zoned for at the school, there was a need for trumpet players, not uh, drummers. So I was put on trumpet and uh, pretty upset about that. And uh, my mother was uh, kind enough to make a call to the band director. And the next day I was playing drums. So uh, since that moment, pretty much everything has been connected to and tied to drums in my life, both as teaching and performing and collecting a little um, and uh, working with artists and uh, recording and doing movies and commercials and many, many different ways, uh, working with the drums. This is a pan or a steel drum from Trinidad. And over here we've got some of the drums from the movie Drumline. These were some of the bass drums that were used. And there are some other drums in the collection, also the snare drums and uh, some of the quads and quint drums. I liked all kinds of music. I was you know, grew up uh, in Las Vegas and all I heard was country and western and uh, I remember uh, Dolly Parton and you know Linda Ronstadt was a big crossover and then I got involved with pop music and uh, R&B and uh, Heat Wave and Earth, Wind and & Fire and uh, bands like that really inspired me and I would sit for hours and hours and hours in practice. Uh, not always doing my studies in school but uh, I would practice eight hours a day and then when I got in high school uh, when the marching band, uh, again, you know, looking at different artists, different styles of music, jazz, and uh, at 20 I was working with uh, my then uh, future brother-in-law, uh, Larry Russo, and playing jazz and uh, learning a lot of different styles of music, so given a lot of good opportunities and very thankful for that, but uh, have tried to play every style of music and still working on it and Took some lessons last week when I was out of town and still learning, always trying to learn. I was born in Salt Lake City and then at age two we moved to Las Vegas and uh, my dad was musical, my mom was not, but they both the parents were very supportive and uh, then we moved from Las Vegas out here to Birmingham and I had you know the great fortune of being in a band program at Homewood uh, that was just electric. I mean that was just absolutely an epicenter for learning and you can take that as far as you want and a lot of those students have gone on to be band directors um, so that was a real advantage having that as a basis for, for education. I started again you know pretty much right out of high school and went into uh, the retail corporate world uh, first working in the shipping and receiving area and then working up to management and, and sales and had a pretty good career for 23 years and traveled the world and did that. But at the same time, and all along the way, I was uh, teaching and collecting and playing professionally in at least four different bands at all times. And uh, have worked with several artists, uh, Tony Bennett and uh, Bob Dylan, and just a myriad of, of bands, usually in the, uh, the rental end of it. And um, just have enjoyed every minute of it. And I'm very grateful and very thankful and uh, am playing in the church orchestra on Sundays now, pretty much 45 weeks out of the year, and that's a real gift to me. That's been the greatest thing I've ever done. But um, I've had practical application of over 2,000 students and uh, just enjoying the heck out of it. Really enjoy to be, you know, to be part of this. started like most drummers, always loved the big band era. Gene Krupa, Buddy Rich, you know, looked at those videos and listened to those records and eight tracks and cassettes. A lot of kids won't know what any of that is, but, um, you know, that was just always something I'd listen to just till the, you know, the, the darn things wear out just about, literally. Uh, I had a few albums that I wore out. But uh, I always liked the R&B music, always liked, uh, Heat Wave was one of my biggest inspirations and uh, got to meet Ernest Berger, the drummer for that band, about five or six years ago. And, uh, you know, it's just so amazing to meet somebody that you've always, uh, I, I don't use the word idol, uh, you know, loosely, but, you know, idolize because you, got, you just spent so much time with them. You feel like you know them, you know, hundreds and thousands of hours just working up the songs. And, well, and today still, I 
try to see as many different bands as I can live and uh, in concert on TV and, and uh, just always trying to learn and explore new music and I've got a few of my students that are in bands and they're always teaching me new things and it's uh, hopefully that's all part of the growth process you know I, I, I really believe that. The current collection is around 2,000 plus or minus pieces. I started collecting in 1974. I was cutting grass and I would save my money and I bought one drum and then I bought a drum set out of the paper for two hundred dollars and I fixed it up and I cleaned it up and I sold it and bought two more <laughs> and then it just kind of snowballed and I just kind of always went to the pawn shops and the yard sales and the flea markets and the goodwill and you know just looking everywhere and then I really started collecting heavily uh, in the 80s and 90s as I was traveling. And this is way before the internet. This is, you know, $300 phone bills and writing letters and, I mean, it was arduous. I was with Gary Asher, the world's largest drum collector. He has the world's largest collection. Don't, don't believe me. I know I've sold him several sets. What, you specialize in anything in particular, Gary? Or? Real heavy into Ludwig. Yeah, Real heavy into yes. Ludwig. Uh, 170 sets in his attic and over 300 snare drums in his garage. I always had a real affinity for the Ludwigs, the, uh, these plastic drums that were made in the 70s. I always thought they were just beautiful and I could never afford them. So once I was starting to work a lot, you know, 100 hours a week or what have you, and when I'd teach a new student, I'd take all that money and I'd, I'd buy a set of drums and it just, you know, really not for any other reason other than my personal enjoyment and the prices on them were pretty reasonable back in the 80s and 90s so anyway I just continued to do that and uh, there's been a couple of big nuggets you know I'd come across some some famous drums from Fleetwood Mac yeah you know, Rod Stewart's drummer uh, Stevie Wonder Santana uh, Billy Joel uh, Guns N' Roses Cher Twisted Sister Kiss a lot of those guys uh, I either supplied the drums for videos and movies uh, and or bought them after the fact, after the tours. Uh, some of the drums are in different, you know, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We've had them there. We've also had them in Hard Rock Cafes. Um, and ultimately, I'd love to have a museum where I've got everything in one place and can just share it with everybody. And, uh, you know, just buy every drum ever made and teach everybody to play. That's, <laughs> that's the next 40 years. That's kind of... Uh, that's something I said somewhere, and I, that's that's pretty realistic. That's that's what I want to do. So that's what I'm working on. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> Last year, I took the infamous Route 66 trip after finishing a drum show in Chicago that I do every year with Mr. Ludwig and his family and drummers from all over the country. It's the show and it happens the second week of May. So after that I had a little time and I drove from Chicago to LA on Route 66 and all the way, along the way I was stopping everywhere I could, all the flea markets and all the pawn shops and just me, you know, and uh, I, I commandeered about 32 drums. I had to ship some things obviously on the way but uh, I did come back from Dallas on I-20 with about 12 drums in the in the T-Bird convertible. So uh, it was a fruitful trip. And a lot of the drums had stories and I meet, you know, the greatest people. You know, you're talking to people and you find out stories on things. And I had followed up a few leads because I'd been working on picking up a few different drums. But uh, yeah, it, it was just uh, part of the madness, but it was great, you know? <laughs> so 6,000 miles, three weeks. The top down most of the time. The drums in the car at all times. <laughs> in some form or fashion. For me, I remember a few key people in my life, a couple of band directors in particular, and uh, just people that took time and how much that motivated me, you know. And, uh, um, you know, it's just one small thing, if, if you'll call it a gift, but I, uh, I'm always glad to, you know, show the drumming and show as many people as possible, you know. really enjoy it and want to share that. It's, it's very exciting and fun for me. Always has been.